Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Uh, it's me, Moshe. And his wife, Natasha. Are you making fun of me? Uh, no. What did I do to get made fun of so no, quickly? No, nothing. I'm, just, I'm in that mode. Our, our child's really into like copying. Well, I could actually make fun of you because I realized something interesting about you recently. That I'm wearing my robe again? No, I like that about you. Well, I just, I just realized that this merch, my kimono, is so comfortable. So could comf. That I'm going to wear it until we sell a thousand of them. It's starting to smell a little no, bit. No, I washed it. No, and it, it looks washes great. great. It looks great. It has pockets. I can put my phone in it. I can almost kind of sexy. See your I full can like blood. seduce you, but like I can, I can also see your like full breast from I here. can almost answer the door if my Uber Eats comes. Oh, right. Depending on, well, you, they, they give you <laughs> an avatar. If it's a woman, I'd answer the door. You, they give you an avatar. You could see if you want to like be seductive to the guy. No, they don't. For Uber Eats? Yeah, they show you a picture, don't they? Or is it just a name? You're not. It's not like also a dating app. It could be. Oh my god! Have you ever made love to one of your Uber drivers in the last two, few years? No, I haven't, honey. Oh, me neither. All right. Well, Moshe wanted to uh, talk some slang. Oh wait, I was going to roast you about something. Oh yes, yes. I don't have to roast me. Well, I just realized something about you today because I saw your brush toothbrush. Are they still our sponsors? Okay. Yeah. Like I'm not going to shout people out if they're not still our sponsors. You know. Okay, honey. Yes. Although I will say, now that I remember that they're still our sponsors, that brush is pretty dope. Anyway, I saw your brush tooth brush right next to the charging station. And then yesterday, um, I, I noticed that your phone died. And then the day before that, you drove my Tesla until, it, until the battery died. I don't really like plugging things in. You don't like to charge batteries. You're so <laughs> not um, a Gen Z person like me that you won't even you don't even you disdain the idea of char of a battery charged thing so you don't like to charge stuff um that's not exactly true it is true the way that you like to power things is by water wheel i just uh or bicycle not addicted power. to my phone how you are i don't what wake up the in the morning are you addicted and to stare toothbrush? at my phone now my toothbrush i do wake up in the morning and just stare at the brush <laughs> oh you wake up roll over grab your brush and why, just see what's why happening you mind your own business my is toothbrush my... is always charged p.s my it, phone is always charged but i don't always sleep it, with it right next it to my is, head it is I, my business because okay. i live with you and it's my car anyway the point of it is i realize you're just so not like i don't know how young and hip you are and that's why I brought, like, I'm young and hip, and everybody knows that. It's mm. an acknowledged fact about me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're more of, like, a classic person. Mm -hmm. And so I brought some slang, as you mentioned. Um, I thought of this idea. It wasn't our producer that suggested it. It was me and my idea. Um, I brought some Gen Z slang. Oh, because last, last week you were saying that you were trying to say some slang, and I was trying to tell you I don't, I don't like to speak in slang. Right. So it, it reminds you of charging a phone, I believe is what you said. So tell me what. So what we're going to go through some and we'll see if I know them and we'll see if you know them and we're going to see who's the youngest of us. <laughs> Even though we know that based on birth date, it is me. But we're going to see who's the culturally the youngest, okay? I'm not going to know any of these. Let's see what's up. Okay. I bet you know this first one Glow Up. Put makeup on? I think that it is to like, you know, when you put makeup on and a nice outfit and you become like, uh, hot, you, you become hotter. You know, you glow, you glow up. If I heard, if someone told me they were going to go glow up, mm -hmm. I would not be friends with you them. You would go throw up. I mean, that is like, that doesn't sound hip and young, honey. Well, it wouldn't from your perspective. Okay. From the, the more aged perspective. Glow oh, up. Okay, next. Yes. Stan. A fan. Good. Very good. From the, what's the etymology of it? The etymology? Well, where does it come from, the term? Uh, I don't know. It's from the Eminem song, Stan. And he's writing to Eminem saying what a fan he is. And, that, and then it became a slang term. Okay, here mm. we go. Salty. Like a bitch, like pissed. Not exactly. Oh, I know, like it butt, is, hurt. No, butt hurt. Yeah, butt hurt. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good, good. You're really, you're nailing it right mm, now. I'm pretty young. You are right now very young. Cap. Um, Like when there's... uh. A finite amount of something. No, that's the definition of the word, the actual w word in English. <laughs> it also could be a, a jaunty hat. Okay, is it? Does it have to do with um, guns? No, it's not a cap gun. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. 
Uh, do you know? I do know what cap means. What's that? Cap is uh, a lie. Uh, but it's the way you use it is... Uh, so you say it in a way that doesn't make you seem like an, like very you, dumb. What do you mean? Like you're going to sound like you're trying to be cool. Well, do you want me to say it? Say, say it, it in, the, the in the sentence. It would say, I would go like this. Um, I'm significantly culturally younger than my wife, Natasha. No cap. That's how you would say it. Okay. No cap. Yeah, you honestly, say. you sound like you sound like someone who would be in the streets talking like that. Are you serious? Yeah, it does make you sound pretty tough. Oh my god, I love. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Natasha. You okay, were a little bit cap. intimidated by me. No cap. So you no have to cap. say no cap. Okay, I, think you I got could it. Say cap too. I'll try that out. You could say. No cap. I even think you could say capping. You know what? As long as you say it in your own way, I think it's fine. Uh huh. No capping. No, no. No cap. No cap. Yeah. No cap. Okay. okay. What's the next one? Uh, this one, I actually resent the fact that this is thought of as Gen Z slang because it's actually my generation slang. This is old 1990s, early 2000s Bay Area slang that has then been appropriated by Gen Z culture and then they're trying to pass it off as if it's their own thing. But it, it's simp. Isn't that like a little bitch boy? Kind of, yeah. A simp, a, a, yeah. It's kind of a little bitch boy. It's and it has to do with emotional feelings uh, for a, like a if partner. you're simping, you're like kind of like sprung too hard, That's and right. now you're like right. But I used to date a girl in two thousand and no nineteen ninety eight, and we had this like cute, our cutesy little thing was we would sign our uh, emails to each other N T S O A, not to simp or anything, you know. So it's old, is what I'm saying. Oh my god! Oh, you don't like that? Did you ever do anything cute and embarrassing when you were dating the litany of men that you dated? All right, all right, here we go. Honey, we're, simping ain't easy. It's not, but it's necessary. Okay. okay. Next up. Oh, by the way, I am, a, I am, simping on you. No cap. I'm sorry. What is what does that mean again? No lie. No cap. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I no am cap. simping on you. No okay. cap. All right. All right. Next, we get into camp. No clue. I don't know this one either. I mean, I know what it means in a gay context, which is if like If I had campy. to guess what it would mean, yeah, like a version of campy, but then it wouldn't make sense because it would be the literal. All right, what does that mean? What is camp, Laura? Ironically trendy. Ironically trendy is camp. That's kind like of- Like Crocs. But that's kind of what camp means anyway. I guess in a way, but it's become more specific. So Crocs are camp. What did someone say to our kid yesterday? Crockin' and rockin'. Crockin' and rockin'. Now, she wasn't doing it in a camp way. But crocs are camp? In this new definition. Because hmm. to me, what camp means is like gay and ostentatious. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. And they're not, yes. that's not what this is. It's ironically trendy. It's like, it's like my mustache. Mm. Okay. Okay, next up, drip. I know what that means because you say it and I make fun of you because you sound like you're trying to be 14, what, what but it's it like a w the way someone dresses. Very good, Natasha. They're, but they're clothes specifically, they're so you'd say like, oh, Moshe's, would you say Moshe's got drip or Moshe's drip looks Yeah, I think you can do fine. it. I believe you can do it either way. I believe, you, I believe both are acceptable. Okay. Alex? Yeah, okay. Hits different. I don't know what that one is. Well, it's, that one's a Oh, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. She what? hits different. What's it's it's like she's kind of like off or weird. No, 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 no. no. Incorrect. Totally incorrect and actually embarrassing. <laughs> hits different is it's a little bit weird of a slang term because it means what it is. It's but it's like rubs you the wrong way. No, no, no. Incorrect again. Very embarrassing. Like okay, uh, you know what that 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 new Drake hits different. It's like it hits you deeper and differenter. Or I'm differenter in a positive I'm, way? I'm dating this new dude. I got to tell you that dick hits different. Like I'm on. It's Interesting. A, am I right, Laura? Yeah. Okay. Meaning I'm right. like it's, but it, but what you're not saying, it, it means better then, right? Usually it means better. Okay. But I think it can also not always mean better. Hits different. Sometimes something is so awesome that it impacts you or inspires you on a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you could say, you know that ketamine hits different and i See, have but i would say hits differently but because i not, like to speak um correctly i like the idea of you using gen z slang but in like really proper english thank you that dick hits differently <laughs> i've got dicked down much differently <laughs> this week i was dicked down quite differently <laughs> okay um s slaps 
Ugh, I hate when people, people look so pathetic when they write in slang. Like all these like white girls on my Instagram will be like, this slaps, this slaps. Ooh, I love this song. This slaps. Whereas slaps. you would say this strikes. I wouldn't say anything, but I'm just saying like. So what does it mean? It means it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It essentially means to be excellent or amazing. You've most likely heard slap in reference to music. This song really slaps. Thank you. It slaps so hard, it hit different. That's good, honey. Okay, no cap. <laughs> okay. All right. Take several seats. I think you know this one. No. Oh, you don't know this one? No, it sounds... I like it. You need to... You need to take several seats? You need to take several seats. Oh, you need seats. to take a take a time out. Yeah, bow down very take many times. Take several time. seats? Take, now, I, this one I love. Honey, take several seats. You don't need to be involved in this conversation. So, it's just basically instead of saying just take, take a breather... It's more like check yourself. Is it aggressive? Yeah. Okay. So it's. What do we got? Let's do the definition. It's if someone is really getting on your nerves, you might tell them to take several seats. Honey. Yeah. I'm glad I, I'm glad I know this one. I feel like it's going to come. Come, come in, in handy. handy. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing more pathetic to me than when someone uses Gen Z slang to uh, back at me. Take several seats. I'm really into this one. I okay. Love it. Here we're getting to one. I don't know. Yes. E-girl or E-boy? E-girl? I don't know what that is. E-girl? It probably means they are on drugs. E, nobody says E anymore. They'll say Molly, I think. It can't have to do with ecstasy. E-girl, it, maybe it's an, like how, you know. An Young e- people are going to keep changing language because it's all they have. Honey, so they're just you going did it to too. keep. What are you talking no, about? No, but they're going this to keep a, trying to exclude you. This and is, you're going to keep trying to like oh, talk like them. Okay, codger. This is not a, a function of this generation. We had slang. Your parents had slang. What do you think 23 skidoo was? I don't think 45-year-olds were trying to talk like... You're wrong. 12-year-olds. Oh, you're saying old people didn't use the slang of the young people yes. back then. Right. That's true. I'll give you that. I just think it's... It, Actually, that point, it's hits, little, that point hits different. It's, it slaps. Okay. E-girl, E-boy, new age goths, love them. It usually describes the aesthetic of wearing gothic fashion while simultaneously being interested in ga- oh gaming. So Wait. they're cute. They got me up until then. It's basically the new goths are you, gamer goths. Can we see some photos? Because I'll tell you what I was into recently was that health goth trend That's that I saw. Hot. I thought that was pretty cool. So, so let's see what an e girl looks like. Do they look like a health goth? No, they're not healthy because they just they're <laughs> they stare at the um. I don't know. These girls are kind of cute. I got, you know what they are? They look like candy ravers. Wait, these are the, these are girls that are playing video games. They look that good. No Uh, way. They get all dressed up to play video games. Yeah. Like on Twitch or something like that. And then they'll like get railed from behind if it's on OnlyFans. These are, these girls seem cool actually. E-girl, E-boy. What about E-boy? Will you show us some E-boys? E-boy. Interesting. I wonder what kind of music do they? Oh, maybe they don't listen to music. They just they listen to the soundtrack of video games. Oh, gaming. look, Timothy Chalamet is the first <laughs> one that comes up. Okay, they're kind of cute, actually. I, I think I might like the e girl. You know what? I, okay, hold they're on. Emo, you it's know, great. You know what I will say that I like about this e girl e boy thing? Hmm. They're trying, and they got a thing going on fashion wise. I'll tell you what I don't like is this like dump truck Seinfeld look that's in right now. Like everybody's just like, oh, I know what'll be hot is if I purposely dress like a 90 year old mom taking orange wedges to their you know that like what are you talking about that what like, trend that like norm core ill-fitting like the the trend you is like that it's ugly hot girls and ugly jeans yeah but just these like billowing shapeless like there's nothing to the it's not even about like the shape actually it's about like the the effort is to not have effort and it, it is to look ugly these ego e-girls and e-boys they're trying to look they're trying, and I like that. I don't mm-hmm. like this. I don't like the trend of not trying and, and being cool. I guess it's a little punk, and I understand where it's coming from. Oh, also, here's what's but cool I don't about wanna, them. I don't want to see a girl dressed like Kramer. <laughs> also, I think e-boys and e-girls, they're like gamers at heart, but then think of what a normal gamer looks like. They're trying to, they're like a rebellion against you like mean, the sloth. They're like, we're going to like. You're so backwards if you our, think a gamer has a look, huh? You don't think? I play video games. Everybody plays video games now. You're not playing them all day you long. You mean like a hardcore gamer. You're talking about like. Yeah, well, you're thinking of the guy. You're thinking of the guy that like operates the comic book shop in The Simpsons. <laughs> basically. I mean, I guess I, I guess 
a gamer, I don't know. I thought that someone who's who's on. All right, you, what constitutes a gamer? How many hours a day are you playing video games? I Over think, five? I think a gamer is anyone who regularly plays video games. I don't. You don't. You think it, you have to be about the culture full on. Well, yeah. I mean, you play video games once a week. You think If you're somebody asked me, are you a gamer? I'd say, yeah, I play. No cap. <laughs> I simp video games and they hit different. <laughs> All right, here's another one. You ready? <laughs> Honey, honestly, with your, t- and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be aggressive here, but with your take about um, gamers, you need to take several seats, <laughs> preferably one of those video game seats with the speakers in it. I mean, nothing against playing video games, but I do you think to constitute against- being a against- gamer, it should be like probably a certain amount of hours. What do you mean we- nothing against video games? You have everything against video games. You hate them. I mean, I don't play them. And you hate them and judge people that do. <laughs> No, I don't. I would rather... I judge you, but that's because you're my husband. I would rather walk in on my boyfriend hanging himself while jerking off than see him with one of those Xbox headsets. That's your line. Okay, well, maybe that's, uh, you know... persona? No, I I feel that way, but also it's a joke. But also, yeah, I, I... It's not attractive to me. Yeah. I can't help that. Well, you know what is attractive to me? What? E girls. All right, let's move on. Okay, you, this one I know you know because okay. it's how you feel about me. Thirsty. <laughs> it, yeah, you're just kind of like simping. Simping. They're very similar. Well, thirsty is thirsty. Uh, simping implies a little bit more like you actually have a connection. No, I was gonna say it's like a little more like sad. Whereas like thirsty is no, more active. No, thirsty I think is sadder. Thirsty is okay. more pathetic. Like, okay. Is a, you know, it's like uh, you're cr- creeping me out. Like you, uh, you're you being too thirsty. Yeah, desperate. And you, it's not always for love. It's for attention. It could be for whatever. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're going to know this one, but uh, I do. Guap. Guap. That probably means hot. Uh-uh. What? It means money. It's what I'm it's not saying that guap. Am I right? It's money. It's money. You're like, yeah. oh, how much guap should we pay the nanny? <laughs> <laughs> you sound so dumb. <laughs> um, excuse me. How much guap would you say is enough to put into the 401k <laughs> to just kind of ensure that our retirement plan is fully set? Now, how much guap would you put in, in uh, c- CDs versus the market? <laughs> is the guap in the market really volatile right now? <laughs> Okay, money and lots of it. Okay, this item, what is this? Sheesh? How is that Gen Z slang? Does it mean something new, Laura, before you show us? Does it mean something other than sheesh? Every, what do you mean sheesh? It's an evolution, our producer says. Sheesh? Well, I don't know sheesh. I mean, I know sheesh. It's probably similar to... Classic sheesh. Classic sheesh. First, first Gen <laughs> sheesh. Gen X sheesh. But it probably has like a little nuance to it. All right. Let's see. What's the sheesh mean to the Gen Zs? Usually. Sorry, we can't see it. Usually used to hype someone up if they're looking good or doing something good. Okay. So they kind of flipped it. It means good. Like, I guess you could have used it that way always. Like, sheesh, you're looking good. Sheesh, ma. (laughs) You sheesh. That outfit looks like it costs guap. I'm not trying to be thirsty, but sheesh. Okay. Good it job, hits huh? different. <laughs> okay. See, you can talk like that if you want. It's cute, I guess. I mean, I do it. I, you know how I do it? Wait oh. a minute. Hold on. The way I use this slang, if I ever use it, I use it in a very um, camp way. Mm. Ironically cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on. Period. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? I mean, this one's dumb because this means period. It means period. It means period, but but it means like really period. Like I'm not listening to anything he has to say, period. And it's just, it's like, (laughs) it's text, it's text slang. Well, text-based slang is different. Like our producer also just told us that if you have two spaces, like do you do two spaces after your... This was the mark between a boomer and a Gen Xer, right? If you do two spaces. Two spaces. After, but what does a book do? After a period. After a period. When you're typing an essay and you uh, end your sentence with a period, then do you do one space or two spaces? If you do one, you're young and cool like I do. And if you do two, you're old. Okay. <laughs> okay. But question, when you write a book, don't they do it as two? That's probably like, st- st- 
I mean, I'm guessing because the two is the marker of the old, it must be the MLS style guide says to do two period. Mm. So that must be it. But I do one because I hit different. I type different. You don't listen to no funk and wagnalls. No, funk that. <laughs> funk, funk and wagnalls. I'm from the streets. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm strictly, I'm strictly um, E.B. White. Or what's the other style guide? Anyway, no, let's move. E.B. White, that's the one that you want, the elements of style. But right. that's like, I guess the new thing is we, we, we're going to do something different. All right. Which uh, I'm fine with. Natasha, after listening to your take on gamers, if you ever meet one of these gamers, you're going to catch these hands. This is the next one? Yeah. Catch, Ca- catch, catch these, these hands. hands. What does that mean? You're going to catch these hands. Oh. You're going to get slapped. Yes, you're going to get beat up. I'm going to beat you up. Which has nothing to do with uh, something, uh, a a song slapping. No, no, because you might get punched as well. You're just going to catch these hands. Okay, I like that. If I see you in the streets, you're going to catch these hands. That's good. It kind of sounds like what a 50s dad would say to his kid. Yeah, yeah, kind of so. Yeah, that's yeah. All right. All right. What else you got here? Uh, Sending me. I I have no clue. Shall I use it in a sentence? Yes. Wait, do you know all these? I know. So far, I know most of these. Okay. Sending me? Sending me. Oh. You know what? Sade Sade be sending me. Love it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, that just means... It puts me in a different... It's it's in your heart more. Uh, Let's see what it has to say. What's the official definition? If you find something particularly funny... Ah! I'm wrong. I th- really? Moshe. Interesting. You you messed up. I funked up. I funked and wagnalled. Wait, sending me so is be about like, humor? N- n- that Natasha Leggero show, she was sending me. I thought it was about loving something, but it's about loving a funny thing. No, it's about laughing, Moshe. Okay. Gosh, you know what? I don't know them all. Sheesh. In the no. old way. Old sheesh. <laughs> You should start saying old sheesh. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, bussin. Uh, I would say bussin. busy at work. I, I feel, it feels like it's bus, busting, but let's. I don't know what that means. What's bussin mean? A quirky word to use when you taste something delicious. Interesting. Busting with flavor. Maybe it's a take on that. Dude, this Big Mac is bussin. Bussin? Like that? Yeah. Ooh, these talk exactly these, trip off the these tongue. These talkies fuego are bussin. Kind of a thing? Okay. You really think this is how young people talk to each other? <laughs> I'm sure it is. All right, final one we've got. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet? Yeet. Yeet. Usually uh, pronounced like that, by the way. But I don't, don't quite do that feel again. like I Yeet. Don't please. I don't know what it means, but I know how it sounds. Yeet. Yeet. Um, I think it's probably He was an he was an Irish poet. Uh, Yeats. <laughs> I think that. Or a British poet? Yeats. Yeats. Yeats! Keats and Yeats are on your side. What is Please Yeats? Please don't scream that anymore. Really don't do it. <laughs> Very annoying. Am I going to catch these hands? You're going to catch these hands. What is Yeat? The Gen Z version of YOLO. You only live once. Usually exclaimed when something risky. When doing something risky or throwing an item very hard. Yeah, the only time I, I the reason I know the yeet sound is because it, it's often someone's like pulling a wig off of someone. I feel or like snatching something. Yeet. Mm. Yeet. What does that have to do with YOLO though? Throwing. Throwing? Yeah. For, you know, you know when the when like the um like a quarterback throws a really long pass, they usually scream yeet these days. Really? No. Oh. Yeet! Right. Oh, sorry. I won't do it anymore. Yeah, we have someone to call, honey. They're waiting oh, for us. Wait, all right. Well, listen. How do we do? Who knew Who knew more, Laura? You definitely knew more. But you know what? You have class. Mm. You can't buy class. And that's why I'm simping on you. No cap. <laughs> and honestly, um, what's between your legs is bussin. Good to taste? Yeah, just, yeah, it'd be sending me. Which one did I like? I liked <laughs> Catch These Hands. That was good. Okay. Try that. Take several seats. You also oh, that was good. You also like that. And I think maybe that was it. But you use the word thirsty yourself sometimes. I know. It has seeped into the culture. Yeah. Well, because I like when words describe something that, you know, uh, there's no other word to describe it. You know, sometimes 
how would you describe thirsty? I guess desperate, but yeah. thirsty Thirsty's just has better. a more connotation, like more a evocative. modern connotation of, you know, it feels like it's something more specific. You know what a salty cap is? Oh, a lie that you're lying because you're kind of butt hurt. No, it's um, when you roll a psilocybin mushroom in Spanish rock salt and you just, you make kind of a remoulade with it. So it's a salty cap remoulade and it's actually really good. A cap. Is this a joke? Cap. I have to go. You have to go or should we do the rest of the episode? (laughs) Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners. We have a very special message for you about our Patreon, which we are loving. We're having a dinner party for our 25 tier member. 25 This Wednesday. This Wednesday. If you want to bump that up, you can join us for dinner. But if you don't, five bucks a month makes all the difference in the world. Moshe's cooking his his famous vegan spaghetti. Oh, it's uh, is it vegan? It can be vegan. Yeah, it's good. It's a pasta pasta uh, it or ce- yeah chechi. It's Chickpea a, pasta. It's, it's, it's good. a recipe that he has appropriated from Rachel Ray. Right. Rachel Ray, the classic Italian and chef. And then there's going to be DJ. I'm DJing. We're having dinner. We're having a chat with our with people. And we've been doing you these. You can definitely put your, uh, we have a little button so you can mute when Moshe DJs. Well, that's if true. If you'd like to get ready, get your food ready. But also then we're going to have a conversation and we're thinking of some, um, we're going to do this like we do at our dinner parties and really have like some. Some nice little icebreakers and stuff. Yes. It's going to be really fun. And that's a cool way to connect to the, the fans and the supporters. But also, uh, we've been doing these dating uh, profile consultations for people. Those have been so fun. And they're really fun and really funny. And, and very it, helpful. There's People have like obvious Obvious issues. mistakes, yeah. We've always seen an obvious mistake. But anyway, uh, we love that people support us. So if, you're, if you've gotten enjoyment out of this podcast uh, in the last few years, give us five bucks a month. Why not? Or you know what? Just keep listening for free. It's your choice. All right, we do have someone to call Natasha. Why don't you introduce them? All right, we're going to call Enzo in Fresno. Enzo in Fresno. Enzo in Fresno. No, okay, I'm gonna Enzo try to, in Fresno. What do you Fresno. think if I try to incorporate some of this slang throughout this episode? D- don't, honey, don't. Why not? It'll be really fun. Let's see how old he is and ask him if he's ever used any of them. <laughs> I love the idea of making up new language, by the way. I just think that trying to sound young is just kind of pathetic. Enzo's here. Hey, Enzo. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? Good. You got a. You're handsome. You're rocking. You got a TikTok background. You just every, wait. Doing why everything is that right. a TikTok? I don't background. know. It just looks like the kind of background you build to make videos with. Am I wrong, Enzo? I, I I'm not a TikToker, but I mean, uh, I'll take it as a compliment. You should. You seem young. Let me ask you. <laughs> do you know? Let me let me quickly ask you. What was the one? Do you know what something when something's bussing? What does that mean to you? Um, it's the opposite of disgusting. Yeah, he's right. Oh, see, he knew. Enzo knew. Enzo knows. All right, Enzo. All right. You've proven yourself. How can we help? Yeah. So, uh, thanks. So first of all, for, for, you know, getting me on the, uh, the pod, I'm a huge fan. Um, so yeah, my wife and I, we've been married for eight years. We have, uh, two lovely, uh, boys and, uh, you know, we were really good friends. Uh, things are going really well. Uh, there's only just one little nagging problem. Uh, she's uh, really loud in the morning. And uh, I'm not sure if that's because um, that's just her way of, of getting up um, or she's resenting me um, be- because my schedule starts much later than hers during the day. So you're sleeping in. Yes. Dude. Yeah, a little. Yeah. I mean, my, yeah. my brother, my brother, I, f- I feel you actually, because. This is a situation I live with too. My wife, I've also been married to her for eight years and we have a lovely daughter and she's also really loud in the morning. And I think it definitely is, Natasha, I think it's, she doesn't even like me to nap. She comes in and will wake me from a nap. I think it's purposeful. Oh, like I'm slightly resentful that I don't know how to nap and my body rhythms won't do it. So you I'm just like, don't like me sleeping, and so you wake no, me up. No, but I like shut the curtains for you, and I do try to like keep. But then I you, mean, you need you guys need to have a discussion. But then you grow to hate me for it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, have you ever asked her? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, I feel it's it's resent. It may be resentful uh, in that way, uh, but I I think one one of the things that uh, I mean, she she we have talked about it, but. She doesn't, you know, she always says that I'm equally as loud. Uh, right now, she actually just sent me a text that said I'm loud. <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> so, I think you have to be. Wait, while you're on the, on the call? 
while I'm the, on the call. Yeah. Talking shit about her. You have to be kind of specific. Like, is there like Moshe slams doors? And I had to talk to him about that and shame him and have other friends talk to him about it before he really understood that he slams doors in an insane way. And wait, are you going to like, context oh, for it? It's because he grew up with a deaf mom. And then we found out like that's why he slams doors. But he definitely slams doors less. But we had to make a big deal out of it. And he's still loud in other ways. But the door slamming's done. So maybe there's something you could zero in on. Like the, could she shut your door and not come back? Or can you wear an eye mask? Or can you just have like a few rules, like maybe three rules about it? Does I feel, that help? I Well, I have a suggestion actually. Uh, I straight up think your wife resents you for sleeping in because- You don't she, know anything about her, Moshe. I, I, I am able, to, what I have is I have a perfect um, scientific uh, comparative um base from which to extrapolate information which is my personal experience with my wife who uh does the exact same behavior and now i'm realizing it's about for sure her looking at you sleep while she's taking care of your two kids and she's looking at you with your perfect hair and going this motherfucker's still sleeping and it just she can't help this is what i think this is my gut tells me you disagree with me i mean okay do you enzo's on my side he thinks it is too I mean, maybe there's a little bit of that. Here's what I thought. Here's my thought, Enzo. What if instead of saying, why are you so loud in the morning? Is it because you don't like that I sleep in? What if instead of saying that, you reframed the conversation to, if you're not more quiet, I'm going to leave you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> if you reframed it to, would you mind being a little bit more quiet? Would you mind if you let me have these hours of quiet? Like what I'm saying is to reframe the conversation from accusing her of sabotaging your sleep to a request for her to give you those couple of hours. Because I just feel like that'll go down easier. Don't you think? Yeah. And maybe there's something you could you could approach her to and just say, you know, is like I'm, I'm not getting as much sleep as I need to and I, I want to be able to. Um, is there anything I can do to help you so the mornings are easier? Maybe I can like make their lunch or do the grocery shopping, but then, you know, so that I can have and then, then you don't you don't hint at it that, you know, you think that she's secretly jealous of you or whatever because you get to nap. But like I think just like putting it out there that like, is there anything I can do to help you? in your hours where you have all the stuff so that you can really have these two or three hours, you know, are, are you a gigging musician? Is that what it is? Uh, I used to be now I'm just a, uh, at home musician. But uh, why, oh, anymore. and you stay up late making music. No, no, no. I don't, why, I don't. why is your schedule different than hers? Well, she, I work from home. And so I have really no, uh, I have no, uh, commute. And so she works 10 hour shifts. Um, and so she's up earlier She's not a she's not a morning person um, at all, and so she she stays up later than I actually do as well. Um, so it, yeah, it's kind of the the weird dilemma there. Wait, do, can you guys wake up at the same time? I mean, you could can, fashion your schedule to do that. Why would he do that? He doesn't want to. So that he can help her with their two children every morning when she, before she goes to her ten hour commute or to her commute of for her ten hour shift. Well, that's a good question. Is the disparity uh, is the how how much more labor is she doing in the mornings than you? All of it? No. Well, I'm I'm actually in charge of watching the kids in the morning, so she has all you know the the chance to get uh, ready. So that's the other side of things is that the the kids are also asleep typically when, before she leaves. Um, so. Oh, so what? she's clomping around solo, waking up your entire family, <laughs> just like tossing <laughs> bottles and cans and shit, going like, where's my glasses? I mean, she'll she'll set like three alarms to, to wake herself up, um, you know, to, to make sure that she gets up in time. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically I'll I'll watch the kids because they wake up earlier even than, than or I'm sorry, later than I do. So, yeah, I'm still up before the kids. What time do you get up? What time does she get up? What time do they get up? Uh, she's usually up about five forty-five oh, in the morning. Oh shit! And yeah, I, I'll get up maybe around six thirty, so not too, you know, not too later. So you basically want her to shut the fuck up for, for the four- first hour she's up. Yeah, just for forty-five and, minutes. And I have to say something, but those are important. That's important because it's like now you've got to wake up at five thirty. <laughs> and also, uh, I figured it out. Yeah. Uh, wait. Now I lost it. I. This is what I think. 
I think that w- if you reframe this from a why are you so loud to would you mind if you gave me could that 45 minute because that's a big 45 minutes. Here's the thing. Moshe would tell me he was like he would be like, you can't have your alarm go off three times a morning. Wouldn't you? You wouldn't let that happen. I it, every morning I, I had my alarm go off three times. That would be pretty annoying. You would be like, I know you. You'd be like, listen, you need one alarm. Yeah. I think he's within his rights to suggest that. It, the difference between 545 and 630 is the difference between um, a desperate, horrifying human experience and humanity. <laughs> so I get Don't it. tell her that. Yeah, that's an important 45 minutes. But what do you think of that? If you, if you stopped accusing her of trying to sabotage your sleep and started requesting that she give you your time to sleep. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I don't even mind if I shifted my schedule to to align with hers. Um, I just want to know that ahead of time to to make sure that you know we are on that same page. Because then what I can do is I I'm I'm a little bit more like a baby when I don't get my full hours of sleep. So like I can just make sure that I go to sleep a lot earlier if that's if that's going to be the case. I think that it's worth a, ch- a talk with her and say, listen, babe, you know, just for that hour before you leave, like if you could like keep your your heels at the front door and like, don't, you know, or like just be a little more aware and like not have the alarm keep going off. Like there's got, I tell Moshe that sometimes like today you woke up early to go surfing and I said, please don't wake up the child and please like try to be, don't bang around the house. And I did. I, I walked. You the, were, you were quiet. I was actually literally putting on my, my flamenco, flamenco heels. Cause <laughs> I usually in the morning I'll do like a little flamenco, like kind of stomp dancing. And when she said that, I was like, you know what today out of respect, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I mean, these are our roommates and lovers, but like you have to be able to have talks like you would with a roommate, right? Does she Shouldn't stomp? We? Is she a stomper? Um, she, she won't admit to it, but yeah, I, I mean, she's, yeah, she's a, she's got a, uh, I mean, she's much smaller than I, and I probably try to make a, we have hardwood floors. So well, there you I, go. I, I was going to say, here's a more practical suggestion. Get some runners, get some wife runners. For real, go to Ruggable and grab some some Ruggable runners just for your wife, and so she can stomp on those, and she won't wake you up. I mean, this is no. She just needs to be a little more conscious. I know, but the problem with consciousness, as we have come in our marriage to realize, is that some things you're you're just being inconsiderate about, but some things you just are. It's just how you're wired. She's probably so groggy and tired in the morning that she doesn't give a fuck about anybody but the fact that she's super tired and she can't help stomping around and clumping and clanging and, you know, and so I would say find some workarounds, change the language around it, buy some runners. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't I don't think she does it intentionally at all. I mean, it, you're, you're right. I think that she just, you know, she's miserable in the morning. So, you know, uh, it's, it's probably just a reaction to her, uh, her morning misery. I'll tell you what, one thing that would be good as her husband, you said she goes to bed pretty late. Yeah. Well, you should come in when you're going to bed. This would actually, she would love this and women love this. This is just a, from player to player. Just let me tell you, <laughs> come in with a, with a, maybe even with a big alarm clock and point at it, tap the clock and say, bedtime, babe, it's time for you to go to bed. And hey, kind hang of, on. let me grab my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't women like that bedtime and then force her to go to bed, you know, say so it's time for you. It's time for you to go to bed. No, but her being toxic in the morning and like maybe conversations will lead to like more understanding or maybe if she really does hate her job that much, maybe she needs to look for another job or I, I don't know, you know, like, and you could say something like, you got to be able to talk about this stuff. Cause you, you could say something like this. Like, I know that you, you're not being loud like you you reject the characterization that you're being loud i accept that but what i'm telling you is is it wakes me up so even if you're not being loud it's it's loud enough that it's waking me up is there any way that we could work together to find a way for those first 45 minutes for just the level of uh, yeah and and then add say i'm just so much more present with the kids oh that's good if i get that extra 45 minutes of sleep i found the difference between like being really present and then just be zone being zoned out so that's really good natasha welcome or or start lying to say the other day when you went off to work our sons said um is is mommy uh is mommy under some sort of spell and you say what do you what do you mean honey says it seems that she turns into a horse in the evening 
because when I w- she wakes me up every morning, I hear the sound of hooves clomping. Is mommy part horse? And then you say, you know, it was really scary for him. You know, it's, something like that could be really fun. Like make it so that she um, thinks that the kids are being traumatized by it. I mean, she, so she loves her job and um, she's not, you know, she doesn't want to change that. She's just not a morning person. And I, I, I am, I don't mind the early mornings. And so, um, and you can start with that. That's how you start your speech with her. You know, like, I know that you're not a morning person and I, and I'm happy to like take over in the mornings with the kids and, you know, it's my pleasure. But, you know, one thing is I just need that extra hour of sleep. And I just find that, you know, I'm being woke up. And is, is there any way you can work with me on that? Like, you know, just be a little more aware of help me, me being help here. you. This is Natasha. And I had this conversation where she was feeling frustrated because she gets up about 45 minutes earlier than me. An hour. For, I would say 45 minutes. It doesn't matter. Anyway, she was like, it's frustrating to me because I get up. And then if our kid gets up, I'm doing all that stuff. And so I started, I started doing this thing where I, I have like kind of two jobs at night. I make the lunch and put it in the fridge and I help her pick out her um, outfit so that it, and I don't do it perfectly or every My night. My outfit. What? My outfit. Oh yeah. I, I helped Natasha pick out her outfit because <laughs> she, uh, she's kind of slovenly without my help fashion wise. No, for the kid. So I took these two things off of her plate just to like help a little bit with that early morning boost so or whatever. So you can also, but, but they have a different situation. What, what I'm saying is your wife might, you know, might need a conversation of what are some ways that she could work around her morning misery to make your life a little less miserable. Like instead of her saying, Hey, would you change your whole vibe? Which isn't going to happen. It's like, are there any strategies we could work together as a team? Well, I have an idea. You could be like, like, could I, um, fill your coffee maker. So, and have the water. So it's like ready. All you do is press a button or I don't know, like, you could suggest something like, is there anything I could do to make your morning I like this. better? You know, I, you know her better than I do. Like you could say what, something you could leave her out or breakfast or make sure she always has some granola she likes or I don't know, something granola to Granola you don't it. want. That's a loud cereal. That's crunchy. <laughs> very crunchy. You want something soft like I'm cream of wheat. I'm just trying to think cream like... Cream of wheat. That's nice. That's a, so, that's a silent well, cereal. not much you can do in the, like, the, the, the time between 5.30 and 6 besides coffee. What I'm saying is she could make some little adjustments. The idea of going to her and saying, hey, will you change? Probably she can't do that. But the idea of going to her and say, hey, would you mind to do this one very specific behavioral difference? Would you wear your slippers in the morning until you leave the house? Just a little very specific thing is like a workaround. I would say like 90% of my life getting better as I've gotten older has been figuring out workarounds. I, I've, I haven't had my... Does that mean you're like cheating kind of? No, it's like I haven't had my, fo- my phone uh, cut off since they invented auto pay. You know, like it's all these little things that I'm like, I'm incapable of doing X, Y, Z. What's a sideways way that I can get this thing to be accomplished? I would say that's my, my biggest thing that has changed my quality of life is finding things like that. So one thing, one thing is I, I don't... I'm, I'm wondering if I'm being selfish in this because I, I'm, she stays up late, but it's usually for a reason. She's also in school right now. And so she's doing homework and, and things like that. Um, so am, am I just, could I take it upon myself to change my schedule to accommodate her in, in that way? Or That's a conversation you guys, she's got a lot on her plate right now. I feel like you need to have a talk with her, even though you are watching the kids every morning. I think you need to have a talk with her about what she expects from you, what would help her, what, what you would like. That's where you can have this talk about well, the morning, but they, you need to have a talk, right? I mean, if you, if you're down, you can do that. But the, the, I think, I don't think that sh- there's no asshole in this scenario. There's, there's one horse, but no assholes, right? Like neither of you are being jerks here. It's just that she's being loud and she can't see she can't see it for whatever reason maybe she's being defensive maybe it's that she's burning the midnight oil studying and maybe that's really admirable and understandable that's why i think like reframing the whole thing to like how do we get how can we get your way without uh, it becoming a conflict that's a, uh, would you it's like that classic would you happy or would you rather be happy or right principle like okay you want her to admit that she's loud or do you want her to be quieter yeah well, Enzo, I think we gave you a lot to think about. And <laughs> if you pick the right things, I think it's all going to work out. It, but don't be afraid of talking to her about what, what would help. Because working 10-hour days, commuting, and going to school, sounds, that's she kind sounds of a lot. She sounds very admirable and like she's kick, kicking ass in life. 
but that doesn't yeah, she is. she's it, great yeah she's she is but that does not mean that you don't get to sleep in they're not connected they're not connected ideas but he also should talk to her about what kind of support would she help needs. her you know and I, and i think that i like yeah. what you said natasha we've given you a lot to think about and if you choose the right thing <laughs> it's all going to work out so listen back to this episode see what those right things are we can't tell you because that's your journey and if you pick the wrong things, then your life might fall apart. But So we really hope that you pick the right things. Okay, good luck, Enzo. Thank you. You, both, so much. you both seem very sweet, and this, will, this too shall pass. All right, thank you all. Later. Okay, bye. Bye. That was interesting. She, she's, yeah, interesting, interesting. What, what's interesting about it? Well, I just related to him so much, just having a wife that's constantly You think waking I'm you up. too loud in the morning? No, I think that you wait. I Actually, let I... you sleep, and I always tell our kid, I'm like, shh, daddy's sleeping, daddy's sleeping. She's like, I want to go and tell him something. I want him to taste my smoothie. And I'm like, no, no, he doesn't want to. <laughs> He's sleeping. No, no. And I, like, shoo her away. All right. I stand does corrected. Does that help you? It does. You're the best. I love you. But I make it so that you, you I mean, oh, I don't wake you up every morning. By the way, today you were taking a nap. While we were watching a movie with our child. Yeah. I felt so happy to see you napping. Thank you. I was like, yes, she fell asleep. But would you admit that I don't wake you up every morning? Yeah, I'll admit that. But I do think you I wake me up I let you sleep. Up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you do. You know, you're awesome about that. You really are. You are. Thank you. All right. What do we do now? You want to do another call? Let's do another call. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. If you were to mention the thing you need therapy for the most emotionally uh, to our podcast listeners, what would that be? Mm. <laughs> I guess being negative. Oh, uh, I know. Being annoyed by you. I need, <laughs> I need to figure out how to be less annoyed by you. <laughs> well, if you have a similar issue, maybe you're annoyed with your partner. Maybe you feel negative. Maybe, like me, you can't stop reacting violently when people cut you off in traffic. Or cut you off in a sentence. Or Oh, I hate being interrupted. Yeah. I like being respected, and it's a thing that I need to work on. That's why you need to join Talkspace when it comes to therapy and psychiatry. Getting the help you need has never been so simple. Talkspace has made it so easy for all kinds of people to find therapy that's chill, easy, secure, private, and most importantly, in the comfort of your own home. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. It's so important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day because you need to work on yourself. And when you start working on yourself, you start to see positive changes in all areas of your life. Well, here's the best part of it all. It costs less than traditional therapy. And you can also hit your therapist stuff like all the time because you've got like messaging capability. And more than that, you don't have to drive anywhere. Okay, listen. As a listener of this podcast, you will get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the promo code HONEYMOON to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for this show. That's HONEYMOON and Talkspace.com. That's HONEYMOON and Talkspace.com. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, when I was complaining of having deep back problems mm, yes i do don't i know it well I don't was, i remember it i was complaining a lot and we confessed to you guys on the podcast that there was one mattress in our life that was not a helix mattress and that i was sleeping on it and it was making my little back sag and i needed a firm mattress we contacted the people at helix who we have their mattresses and have been sleeping on for years but not with this one mattress we took this sleep quiz they sent us this super firm mattress with this super cool cooling pad. I got to tell you, I already knew how dope Helix mattresses were because I've been sleeping on them. But this mattress is the best mattress I've ever slept on in my life. My back problems, they're gone. And don't forget how easy the setup is. Are you sweating less? Oh, yes, definitely. It's crazy. This is the best mattress I've ever slept on in You literally my life. just have to cut it with scissors and then the whole thing expands. It just woofs up. And it's not even that big when it arrives. High quality with a cooling pad on top, firm for your back. It's just And the people best. compliment. I've noticed because we have a guest room and a lot of friends will come spend the night and, and people are always us. like, what is this mattress? They say, what, yeah, what so mattress am I sleeping on? We tell them, Go to Helix. And now we want to tell you that as our listeners, they provide the best mattress we have ever slept on and they're reasonably priced and they come right to your door and they've got 
either a 10 or a 15 year warranty depending on the model and you can also try it out for 100 nights risk free so listen you can return the thing if you don't like it you won't though because it's the best mattress i've ever slept on helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners the one that we got was called the helix twilight deluxe now that's not going to be the right one for you necessarily but for me that sleep quiz it was the perfect mattress for me and natasha Go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Uh, we are going to call... Ooh, this is from your neck of the woods. We'll see about that. Jennifer from the Bay Area. That's not how you pronounce it. The Bay Area. No, not how, even close. How do you say it? The Bay. The Bay. Mm, no. The Bay. <laughs> yeah, that slaps. <laughs> that strikes. <laughs> Jennifer. Hello. From the Bay Area. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah. Where are you in the Bay Area? Do you not want to say? Is there no, a... I, I can say, but, you know, the Bay Area just sounds so much more official. Um, I'm, I'm in Alameda. Oh, Alameda. That's, now, that's the Bay. We, that's that, the, yeah. It's beautiful there. That's, that's the real Bay. Re- I think so, yes. But I also, I've lived in Oakland and Berkeley, so. We stan Alameda. I've gotten all of our rugs at the antique market in Alameda. That's right. Well, that's actually in Oakland. That's oh. awesome. I thought it was in Alameda. No, the man who runs it lives in Alameda, which is what I think is happening for oh, you. Oh, yes. He had us over there's, for tea. He, he slaps. He slaps. Well, th- there's there's the one every month at the point. That's so right. I don't know if- that's the one, the big antique fair. That's the one. That's Alameda. That's Alameda. Wait, no, that's in Alameda? Yeah, the mm. point. That's Alameda Point. Looks like uh, I'm right. Yeah. All right. Well, you know. I, I fail again. Okay, do you want to ask Jenny if... Uh, Jennifer, Do you want please. to ask Jennifer one of these Gen Z slang words? Well, you look Gen Z, but you might not be. It's a, You're I, actually a confusing... I'm not, I'm, I'm not. And Natasha can call me whatever she wants. I don't care. You got one of these confusing <laughs> looks where, like, it, you, you're, you're mythical, age, you're kind of ageless. Ageless a, beauty. But yeah, doesn't she seem like she could be 18 or she... I, I don't know what's your deal exactly. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I did. I did put on my fancy robe for Natasha too. Oh, Thank she's wearing. You. Yeah, you guys are robe sisters. All right. So, uh, my question is: I'm looking for some guidance from some fun, awesome people about becoming Jewish. Oh, and you've about come converting. To the right place. So, <laughs> you're, wait, you're converting without without like a partner, like just on your own. No, no, no. Let, let me give you a backstory. Okay. So I've, I'm, I, I'm, I've been married for 13 years. I have two beautiful children, and my husband is is a, is a Jewish man. Uh, he's a he's a he's a he's a West Coast California Bay Area Jewish man. So I thought some, you know, Moshe and him could bond. Uh, so he and, likes he likes hip hop and stuff like that. He loves hip hop, Burning Man, sure. Star Trek. Oh wow! This really. Guy sounds like- Really Wait, awesome. Is this your second yes. family, Moshe? <laughs> That's why Jennifer comes on like, you have like an ageless quality to you. So beautiful. <laughs> now, where in the Bay Area did you say you live? Because I don't know. I've never been there. What? <sighs> so, yes, that's my question is if... Um, oh, wait, so you've already been for 13 years not Jewish with him raising your ch- raising your family? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, our so children, why now? Our children, we're, we're raising them Jewish and we've always tried to encourage, you know, we with our oldest son uh, who's six talking about, oh, you're half Jewish, you're half Jewish. And he loves saying that he's like Bruno Mars. But now recently he's, <laughs> right? He's also I, would choose, I would choose Drake, but yeah. <laughs> well, he's, you know, with his generation. That, anyway. Okay. But now he's been talking more about wanting to be seen as whole Jewish. Uh-huh. And I think that's beautiful and I, whatever he wants. But then... I, I know that in some forms of Judaism, the a lot of the pressure is on the mother. Sure. And, if she, and if she's not Jewish, then you're not really Jewish. And I just don't want anyone to ever tell my baby boy that he's not Jewish. Mm. And and with current events that are happening in the world, I felt like an overwhelming desire to like shake off my past. Mm. So I, I was raised in a Christian home, uh, a, a, a Protestant, whatever the right term is. Like I was... Let's just share. Uh, I was raised Cumberland Presbyterian. If you ever want to Google that, pretty fun. Small, small, uh, small little denomination. But what what are the Cumberlands all about? <laughs> Tuxedo accessories or what's their thing? That's a cumber bun, honey. I know. But it, it's cumber bunch, yeah. Um, cumber, cumber bunch, cumber bunch. He founded it. <laughs> but why? What's what's special about them? Are they bad? No, I never thought. I know. I thought it was going to come from like a like all of a sudden a yeah something rape ring. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a that's what happens with a lot of religions. I hear you. Yeah. 
Okay, so you want to shake off your past. You want to commit to this Jew thing. And you're, yeah. you're worried about your kid having a stigma of having a non-Jewish mother. Is that the reason you want to do it for real? I mean, why do you want to do it? To shake off her past, she said. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's... It. You, you feel embarrassed to be a Christian right now? Like, because they're well, like... I wouldn't say embarrassed, just done. Just absolutely done. Like, with it. all of the Roe versus Wade things happening. And then I recently learned that um, uh, my... not. I don't want to say mine, but the congreg- the, the the faith that I was raised in recently had a, v- a vote of whether or not uh, gay people could minister. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I'm sorry, what? Like it yeah. was it was like it was like learning your favorite uncle was racist. Uh-huh. Wait, I, I wait, know wait, 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 wait. I like, can't believe no. I cannot believe that the Cumberbund people <laughs> wouldn't let gay people minister, but no, the Christian Cumberlands. <laughs> wait, I have to say though, I really relate to this too, because um I wanted to also shake off my past because I was not Catholic in my heart at all. And so I think there is something if if you don't have any you know, if it's just sort of like convenience as to why you've never really converted, then you should do it. So that's the problem I'm having right now. I feel like I'm the one that always encourages doing more Jewish stuff. My, my, my husband loves being Jewish, but it's definitely, and this is where I think Moshe could uh, identify, it's it's not a religion. It's it's a state of being. It's a culture. And so when I'm like, should we go to synagogue on Friday? Should we do this? And should, like, what are your thoughts on getting the kids, like, bar and bat mitzvah? Are we going to do that? He goes, ah, maybe it'll happen. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, we need to, like, and we need to like join a congregation. Isn't that a thing? Sure. So do you, do you want not- that? I mean, if, if you want them to buy a lot of times, the converted wife is the more fervent Jew yeah. of the couple. I think that's almost like a, like a, stereotype so it, it is it is like we're, we're all just charlotte from sex in the city like ah right yeah so, so i think that if that's important to you and you're used to that and you thrive in a community then you should you know and you're going to have to spend that time and join you're gonna have to join a a synagogue to in order to get converted probably yeah, you know exactly. like it's, so. it's a whole kind of journey so yeah you, you're probably gonna come out of it you know 20 percent more jewish and that'll be good. And I'm sure your husband will go around with you and he'll understand. And, you know, yeah. like I always make Moshe do the sukkah on Sukkot because I think it's such a beautiful holiday. But like, I don't think everybody does that. It's kind of a hassle yeah. to eat outside yeah. for like eight days or something. But anyway, you know, you just have to inspire him and hope that he's maybe make him c- to come to some of the classes with you. Yeah, yeah what? I, think, I think he would if I if I if I found a place he would go with me. I, th- I feel like you just called so you can talk to Moshe. <laughs> and I'm not talking at all. But what I, I'm not, yeah, because I'm not quite sure what your question is either. Like, I think okay. that's awesome if you want to do it. But what what do you want? What how can we help you? Did you feel like you had to tell anybody else or did you just keep it between the two of you, Natasha? Or did you like tell all your friends and family or was it just something like when it was almost done, did you do it? Because what's so funny is when I have brought it up to people to get their opinions, it's people that I care about. Like my mother-in-law, I, I, I love my in-laws. They're amazing people. They were both just kind of like, well, why would you want to do that? The Jewish and ones? The, my Jewish mother-in-law didn't. She was like, she's like, really? You want to do that? And don't worry about it. I mean, it's also about like, what do you want to teach your kid? Like, yeah. you know, like, is there a world where you can say to your kid, like, uh, you know, I'm Jewish in my heart and, uh, you know, your dad's Jewish in his heart and you're, it's that's what's important is how you, you know, it's like, that's like the ultimate mother sacrifice. Oh, my child, they, they want me to be a different religion. Okay, well, now I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll start converting. And, you know, I don't, want, I don't want little Connor to think that he's only half Jewish. When Why he could did be I name him Jewish. Connor? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's my take. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know how important it is. Okay. Well, yeah, why did you do it? Yeah. To please you. You're really not supposed to say that. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not true. I feel very similar to Jennifer in that I wanted to shake off my past. I really liked Judaism and everything we were learning, and it seemed as good as any other religion, you know? And I really, I didn't have any, like, red flags. You know, I liked their whole sense around family. I loved celebrating Shabbat. I enjoyed the synagogue. I enjoyed that they asked a lot of questions because in Christianity and Catholicism in particular, it was like very like, you know, what I say is the only way. And it just all was like a big, don't huge be a minister. I- if you are roll. gay, 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's that's the old saying. That's the cumber. That's the cumberband motto. So that's why I did it. But I'm just saying, like, so well, what you just said is what is what I want. So I I still have a lot of happy memories of attending church in my youth and like friends and camp and all of that sense of community. And I want my children to have. That I get. Idea. I and think you'll I, find it in Judaism. I think I finally yeah. understand what the issue is. I think I finally get what's the, what's going on here. Okay. You didn't. You didn't convert. And as a result of that, tell me when, if I'm getting off track here. As a result of that, and your and your husband is Jewish, but he's not super committed, obviously, because yeah. his, his mother-in-law, <laughs> typically you would say a Jewish mother-in-law is not the type of person to have a laissez-faire relationship with her a non-Jewish uh, uh, daughter-in-law saying she wants to convert, doesn't even care. So she, he's got a real laissez-faire, doesn't care. He's just wears it like an extremely loose garment. You were raised religious, but you don't yes. connect to the religion of your youth, but you connect mm-hmm. to this sense of what a religious kind of uh, ambient noise in your family unit can do for the family. And yeah. now as a result of you not converting and him not caring, you've defaulted to a kind of non uh, spiritual tradition family. Yes. And so yeah. that was So my- if you're Jewish, then you can kind of lead the helm. You know what? This is good. Every Friday, light those candles, have some bread on the table. We do, we do. I make I make an excellent challah. Yeah, she uh, I wants to be yeah. she's Jewish it. in her heart. No, so I this do, is yeah. this is what I was gonna say at the very beginning, and it came all the way back around. Is like there is no there I don't think there's any real at this certainly not 13 years in. There's, right, there's yeah. no point in doing it. That's all I wanted to say. Just kidding. No, there's no <laughs> point in doing it unless you have, as Natasha says, some kind of yearning or connection or feeling of, 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 uh, you know, of, of kesher, as they will, they would say in Judaism, of connection to that faith. Because the truth is, like, if you're worried about matrilineal descent, the ship has sailed. You had your kids, and <laughs> their mom wasn't Jewish at the time, so it doesn't matter if they, if, and, and I venture to guess that if you do convert. Whatever religion you're gonna, whatever um, uh, sect of Judaism you convert into, doesn't give a fuck about matrilineal descent anyway. You're probably gonna you re- go. convert Reform. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. They don't care yeah. about that. They love an yeah. they love an interfaith couple. So really, to me, it's about like you and like okay. if your kid is saying, uh, "I feel you know, half Jewish. I feel weird about that." You guys could do the the ritual together. But, you guys, you oh. you guys could do a conversion together, and he could get his half knocked out and you could get you could get you know knocked in and it's like and it would be nice but only if it feels meaningful i, I think yeah. at this point like your family's perfect there are no problems in your family you're already whole and complete as you are so now it's yeah. about like what's going to add to this little family fire yeah. that's what i think and i think it's important yeah. to uh make sure that you're converting for yourself yeah. And not for your son. And I think your son should also know that, you know, like, yeah. it's just almost like the last step for you, you know, and who cares yeah. what the hell your dad, your, your husband's mom thinks. hundred percent. And by the way, <sighs> who cares She's what a lovely woman, She's a lovely woman. also who cares what anybody thinks, because, you know, your yeah. converting will not Those do Those classes it. are long and annoying though. <laughs> the, yeah. Your converting will not do anything to stop someone from thinking that your kid isn't Jewish unless you convert Orthodox and he does too. And unless you guys convert to a very unbelievably specific group of Orthodox, like basically no matter how high up the conversion ladder you get, there's going to be someone on a rung above it going, you're not really Jewish. Like fuck that. Those people that they're, they're, that's noise. Who gives a shit? Oh, the, you, the approval of someone you don't know, haven't met, and don't respect? <laughs> Who wants that? It's all about you, your family, your connection, your husband, your kids, and how do you create the family that you want to build in Alameda by the antique fair that is once a month right there at the point, as I always the first, said. The first Sunday of the month, yes. It slaps. It slaps. slaps. That Honestly, that fair Thank slaps. You. And you know what else slaps? What? A Jewish household. It slaps. It's fire. So nice. No, it's so nice. I, I stand. I, we we do we do we do do a Christmas tree though because they're just Ooh. so pretty. How if can you, you not? I'm if so you convert, sorry. you got it. That's that's donezo. No. Would you get ready your let me ask, would you get ready your Christmas tree if your rabbi in your conversion told you that to do so? 
gosh. Yeah. If, if, if I had made it to that point and that was like the last step and I've Wait done all second. these other classes, I, I would, I would like, there you, you go. don't get that far and then not, not take the next step off. Our I rabbi did not tell us that we couldn't have a Christmas tree. It's because we don't have one. But if no, I'm just saying, I'm you said ask- we could start having one. I did not say that. I definitely so didn't say that. They are I want to have more. That's I'm going to have my own Christmas that, tradition. No, in there's my no life. Christmas. There's no Christmas. In my life. We can't have Christmas. We can have a Hanukkah shrub. Remember, that's what we uh-huh. agreed on was a weed plant. Oh. Don't you remember? Yeah, but you still have like you decorate it. Judaism, like it. Judaism just hit different. That's the way it is. I mean, it hit different. It hits different. It does. <laughs> That's all I can say. I was just experimenting with slang. Hey, no, it's, I'm loving it. I'm following you. See, I'm, I'm not know. hip at all, so I'm following this. So, yes, Rosh Hashanah is coming up. So, hey. Yeah, well, you need to take several seats before you start getting excited about that. No, you should tell me to take several <laughs> seats about Christmas. You need to take several seats before you start telling me I can only have a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> <laughs> seriously take several okay i'll take i'll take a few how yeah. about i take two take several three three or more three plus three or plus three plus um listen i i think it th- th- that that is my advice that a jewish family and a christian family obviously they can all be very meaningful if you if you put a faith into your family and, and it it has meaning to you. It can. It will have meaning to the family. And if it doesn't feel meaningful, as your old, your religion of your stops feeling mm-hmm. meaningful, you get rid of it. I mean, who cares? And Is you have a six-year-old yeah. who's interested in Shabbat and being Jewish. Oh yes, he's very proud about being Jewish. He says yeah. he's whole Jewish now. I was proud about being Jewish. The truth is, what is religion for? I mean, it's mostly bullshit. I mean, well, some might even say it's all bullshit. The main thing that it's yeah. for is for is for family. It's, it's for yeah. it's tradition and family and connectivity and yeah. connection to your to your your history. You and basically your people. make the guy come home Friday night and hang out with you. Yeah. Yeah. You light the candles. You made him some bread. Everyone puts on their nice clothes, turns off their phones. Shabbat hit different. You eat dinner together. You tell stories. You drink wine. You and have sex. You eat bread. The next day, you fuck more. You sim- yeah. Friends come over. You have wine at lunch. It's not, like You have a lot of wine because you're thirsty. Go for a walk. You're thirsty. <laughs> People mm-hmm. really... Th- it's nice. Judaism's nice. I think so. I, yeah. We, we would love to have you as a member. Although, I don't well, make those calls. I vote. <laughs> Well, we do a vote, obviously, at the annual meeting. Oh, yeah. You get a resume and a headshot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. All right. Well, good luck, Jennifer. Yeah. Will you keep us surprised if it, if it goes through? Yeah, let us know. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you all so much. It oh, was really lovely speaking to you. You could all. learn on, 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 you could, you could get converted on Rabbi Neil Weinberg because I bet it's all on Zoom now. That's right. Judaism by Ooh. choice. Um, yeah. Where are you going to do it? Do you know yet? Have you chosen no. your, oh, no, I haven't. I Judaism haven't by any. choice. Rabbi Neil Weinberg. Rabbi Neil Weinberg. Yep. Rabbi, shout out to Rabbi Neil Weinberg, y'all. All right. Well, good luck to you. And, Thank and we'll, you. See, we'll see you at around the, the Seder table. You've got it. And uh, just one quick before I go. Thank you so much for recommending Rouse, by the way. It's, it's our standard marinara sauce. We buy it all the time. We get it at Costco. <laughs> Hold it's on. the best. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rouse? I think you Rouse. know. Mazzetti? It, well, I think it's Rayo's. And, but Ra- oh, am I saying it wrong? It's no, that's not what I'm going to make fun of you about. I'm not making okay. fun of you. Rayo's? Okay. Rayo's? To be honest, as a marinara, it's like it's, it's, it's bussin' <laughs> and it hits different. It just does. As a marinara, it hits different because it's bussin'. It is so bussin' as a marinara. Do you know what bussin' means? I'm hoping that means it slaps. Yeah, yeah. In a way, it okay. does. In a Am way, I it the, does. Oh, yeah. It slaps it, flavor wise. It flavor okay. slaps you. It's okay, delicious. It's like, okay. Del- Awesome. Yeah. I followed it. This whole conversation has been sending me, but it's also <laughs> slapped and also um and also it's not camp. It's well, sincere. Nice. It's major. Mm, I don't know. Maybe okay. I don't know what that means. Maybe. <laughs> May, it might be major. Okay. okay. All right, good luck to you. And thank you so much. Okay. Shalom. Shalom. Moshe. What's up? Gotta wrap it up or you're gonna catch these hands. Okay. Guys, if you want to leave us a secret, give us a call at 213-222-8608. And send us an email if you want to be on the podcast. Tell us what all your problems are at EndlessHoneymoonPod at Gmail. Hey, fuck with us on Patreon. We got that dinner party tomorrow night for the $25 and up tier. We'll see you there. Peace. And Natasha? Yes. I slap you too. I simp you. I simp you too. I'm thirsty for you. I do. I simp you though. What was the that your other dumb girlfriend said? I no, no simping? 
Not to simp or anything. Not to simp NTSOA. or anything. NTSOA. Listen, honey. Yeah. You're, you, you are going to catch these feelings. Okay. You're going to catch these rest of your life. Because I love you. I love you too.